So you've been listening to me ramble on for quite some time about this, that, and the other. So allow me to ramble on briefly about how I operate this podcast. There's lots of options for how you want to post and host your podcast and you put it out into the world. Uh, I did a lot of research on mine, and for me, I decided to go with Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard of Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's free. That was a big selling point to me. Free is good. Uh, I like free. There's also tools for creation to help you record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer or your tablet or whatever you're using. I find that to be effective. So we got free. We got uh, recording and editing. Both big deals. Uh, because they are. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify. It can be heard on Apple Podcasts. It can be heard on Google Podcasts. And many, many more. That is a huge time saver because I don't have to go to each of those things to upload. So I like that distribution right then and there. And again, it's free. You can make money from your podcast if you're into that kind of thing with no minimum listenership. That could be cool. I think you should try it. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So if you've been on the fence about making a podcast and the only thing holding you back is how you want to host it or create it or whatever, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's worth it. So here's a fun fact. Today, on my way to practice, I called a minivan rather sexy, quote unquote. So that's a first. Um, yeah, did not see that coming. It was a relatively new, like within the last couple of years, Toyota Sienna. It was black on black on black on black. Black everything, black badges, black accents, black paint jobs, super, super, super dark tint. And even the headlights and taillights were fogged out, smoked out, whatever you want to call it. So this minivan was uh, murdered out, as the car modding kids like to say. And, you know, black is not my favorite color. And uh, I, I, I really did think this as far as minivans go. It was a very sexy looking minivan. I wouldn't be ashamed to own that minivan if it was in fact my minivan. And that's a weird feeling, a weird thing to say. I have no desire ever to own a minivan. I've driven several, um, both as rentals and then, you know, friends vehicles for when we'd have little outings or whatever. And there were groups of us and they're not bad to drive. Not, not bad at all. Um, I still don't want one, but... If I had to have one, I wouldn't. it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I'm not going to lie. And anybody who says otherwise is a fucking bitch. Although, I, again, not on my to-do list buying a minivan. So, that's how my day's been. Saw a sexy minivan. Got some food. Left a lengthy voicemail for my mom for Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day today while I'm recording this. Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms out there. I don't know... Um, forgot what I was going to say. I was going to say something about, you know, all the single dads having to do double duty and blah, blah, blah. That That's bullshit. I really don't... You know, I've said that in the past. Happy Mother's Day to all the, the single dads also doing double duty. No, you get Father's Day. There, there's no such thing as 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 a single dad doing double duty or a single mom doing double duty. You're just doing your duty as a parent. And that's my personal opinion. I am not a parent, so I can't really say one way or the other. And be that as it may. Um, hate me if you want to. That's fine. I just I just feel that uh that's that's how it is. Like it is what it is, so whatever. You get your own day, dads, and we'll get back to you in June, I think, is when Father's Day. So next month, we'll come back and I'll say, Happy Father's Day to all the dads. And then I'll say the same thing about the moms. And we already had your day. Just kidding. Celebrate the parents. Like, I got a, most of my friends have kids, and most of my friends are married. Um, I do have some single mom friends. The girlfriend is a single mom. 
of three. Um, kudos to all of you. The married ones, the single moms, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, uh, the single dads. I don't know any single dads who don't have moms in the picture at all. I know at least one where mom isn't really in the picture all that much or is probably better off not being in the picture, honestly, but uh, we won't get into that. But yeah, almost all of my friends, the very, very vast majority of my friends have kids. And even if they don't, they all have pets, so not the same. Kids and pets are not the same. I acknowledge that, although my cat, who is sitting on my desk in front of me, might beg to differ. So you can take that up with her. Um, that's not my decision. That's her decision. She knows where I sleep. I am going to keep this episode short this week because I just recorded the episode just a few days ago um, since it was late. And I rambled on about the old um, romantic interest of my life, Shauna, and the happenings with Fuckhead, her boyfriend at the time, then became baby daddy, then became husband, then became ex-husband, I think. And, you know, how little things can trigger weird, crazy-ass memories like that or whatever, like... The sense of smell, I've, I've read that the sense of smell is the strongest sense tied to memory before. And I tend to believe that because I'll smell things that will take me back to when I was like 12. Or, you know, even even weirder, just spe very specific things. Like I can't re readily identify any one thing, but like my baby's mama, she always wore... Um, I don't even know what it was. I don't know what this scent of lotion was or body spray or whatever it was she wore. I think it was something from Victoria's Secret because, you know, that's where the girls shop. And I it's been a while since I've smelled it. But if I smell it, I immediately think of her. That's just, just how the brain works. It, it's the weirdest thing, the brain and how that stuff happens. And I've seen, I've read studies that uh, like Alzheimer's and dementia patients where they're losing their memories and they they don't necessarily remember things from long, long ago, but a simple, uh, like a song or a smell of something will trigger a memory from, you know, 40, 50 years ago. And it's usually a pretty spot on accurate memory. And not only that, but for them, because of their condition, seems like it's current present time, which is fucking even weirder. So it's always a cool thing. I don't know. You walk into a restaurant and the smell takes you back to the first time you ever smelled that smell, at, either at a restaurant or if you visited a different country or whatever. Um, like, I can still remember exactly how the airport in Hawaii smelled when I went to Hawaii in 2005, walking out of the, uh, getting off the jet bridge and starting to walk to baggage claim. I, I haven't smelled it since then, but I know that if I smell it again, I'll know exactly what it's going to remind me of. Like, I just, I just know it. Um, very, very weird. So anyway, um, yeah, this episode I plan to keep much, much, much shorter than last week's. Last week's was over an hour and I didn't intend on that either. Um, that just kind of happened. So if you listened to it, I hope you liked it. If you didn't listen to it, I hope you do. And I hope you like it. And if you don't listen to it, I still hope you do. I hope you like it and just fucking do it. Um, uh, really, I don't care, but if you do, cool, and thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in to the Death Metal Disco Podcast. Um, I don't have anything to talk about this week for this episode. I really, truly don't. Uh, at least nothing that I want to talk about. Um, I will say, uh, I'm going to try and schedule my old Bill Gates tracking device sometime in the very near future. I've been kind of forgetting to do it. I've been busy working from home the last couple of weeks, which has been nice. But before that, I was on the road a bunch for work. Um, I have uh, Kaiser insurance and, you know, I think they've been sending me messages or emails almost every day saying, hey, you're eligible. Hey, dumbass, you're eligible. Hey, you have medical conditions. You should fucking sign up for this shit. Hey, dumbass. And I'm like, I know, I know, I know. And then I like, I'll do that this afternoon. And then I forget because I am, in fact, a dumbass. So... I think I'll get that scheduled here soon. Um, 
get that done. Good news, the Telluride Horror Show, uh, one of the film fests that my buddies and I do in Telluride, Colorado, is scheduled for October, and it looks like, at least for now, it looks like they're planning on being in person. And I have a feeling that even though they'll be in person, they'll still be like mask mandates and maybe social distancing. Who knows? I hope none of that by then. Um, maybe proof of vaccination or something, which I am not on board with the whole proof of vaccination bullshit. I really don't think that that is... Uh, I don't know. I have very mixed feelings about all that stuff. I'm not even going to get into it. Like the vaccine passport that I've seen thrown around on the internet. Um, whether there's any truth to it or not. I don't necessarily believe in that kind of thing. But I remember, you know, as a kid, before I could go from, uh, I think it was from 6th grade to 7th grade, I remember literally being vaccinated at school and they had a copy of our vaccination records before we could move on to seventh grade. I l remember that. Just I, I just do. So I mean, it wouldn't be the first time somebody's had proof of your vaccination. I think people having it on their person and showing it to. I've seen bars here in Denver. Um, there's one that was uh, they were opening for business and they were catering specifically to people who have been vaccinated. So in order to get in. You needed proof of vaccination, which, I don't know. Uh, to me, that's, uh, it's a brave new world. Um, and you hear people say that term, brave new world, and most of those people uh, have never read Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. And I read that my freshman year in high school. Not an easy read. Um, I recommend it. And not because it's a great book, Uh it's a very interesting read, though, and yeah, you should check it out if you haven't, if you're into interesting reads, so, and, you know, I haven't read it since uh, since high, high school, so it was a hard read back then, I'm not going to lie, but I also read Moby Dick, which was a very, very difficult read, and, you know, I survived that, barely, but whatever. So moving on, the Telluride Horror Show, I haven't bought my pass yet, I wanted to, but uh, I needed new shoes, so I bought some new shoes instead, and something else I just spent money on. Oh, yeah, I took a voiceover class uh, yesterday, a promo class, so maybe one day if I ever decide to apply myself in the voiceover world, which I really should do, um, because because I've, I've spent a lot of money on things for it, I should probably actually put myself out there and you know, either get the jobs or at least get rejected and keep trying. Um, because I like, I like doing it. I like, I like the whole process of it and my phone, I didn't mute it. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, the promo class was cool. It was a zoom class with uh, five students and the teacher and then the host studio, which was the Atlanta voiceover studio in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I don't know if there's any other Atlantas located around the country, but maybe there are. Hosted by Donovan Cornitz. Well, he wasn't hosting it. He was conducting the promo workshop. He's uh, currently the voice of the Today Show, which is awesome. I follow him on Instagram, stalked him for a while. Super, super cool dude with a really, really good voice. Just I have a thing for voices, and his is awesome. He's awesome, and the stuff he puts on Instagram, he sometimes he'll do um, actual reads for some of his promo work for the Today Show, and he'll do the read of his, his recording him, you know, the video of him recording the read, and then he'll actually cut to the actual promo for it, which is awesome because then you get to see kind of the before and after how it's all spliced in with the, the picture, the video and all that, which is cool. But yeah, it was, it was a really good class. I really, really enjoyed it. And I think promo, um, even though it's one of the most competitive segments of the voiceover industry to get into, I really think that might be where I want to go. That might be where I want to focus my energy. Um, movie trailers too, but trailers to me, just the trend that I've seen, they don't use a lot of voiceover these days. And if they do, it's just a little tag, you know, in theaters May 17th or whatever, which is cool. I mean, I'd happily say in theaters May 5th or PG-13 rated R or 
whatever. Now, if they bring back the old school Don LaFontaine trailers, hell yeah, sign me the fuck up. But also sign every other voiceover person ever up for that shit. So, I don't know. There's glamorous VO work, like promos and trailers and commercials. And then there's not so glamorous VO work, like... Uh, totally forgot what it's called. On hold messaging or uh, e-learning, which e-learning is fucking very lucrative. And you can make really, really good money doing e-learning. And you can learn. And learning's good. Learning's fun. Um, I don't know how on board for long-form narration work I am. And that is a form of on of long-form narration. But here I am sitting in front of a microphone talking for a long time. Although it's free thinking, talking, nothing scripted. Very rarely scripted, at least. And uh, totally different than long-form narration. So, whatever. Anyway, that's what I did this weekend. I also did a lot of self-reflection. Maybe more on that to come later. Uh, maybe not. Probably not. So that's that's my adventurous weekend. Telluride Horror Show. Passes are on sale right now. It's October 15th or 14th. 14th through 17th. I can't remember. That week. It's sometime that week. Um, Telluride, Colorado. Me and Chris and Jamie will go and we'll cuddle and we'll watch scary movies. And we'll be like, oh no, it's so scary. And then we'll eat good food. And, uh, you know mountains and stuff so and i like it because a lot of times the scenery um i'm talking about the ladies specifically there are usually a plethora of very attractive lasses up there that i don't talk to so because i have no game and talking to women is uh i should maybe drink this time i never drink when we're up there it's pretty rare jamie and i got a little tipsy the last time we went but Hmm, maybe. Unless they make it fucking uh, remote again like they did last year because of the stupid COVID. In which case, we'll just get hammered in Chris or Jamie's basement. That sounds like a good plan, too. Hmm. Passes were, I think, right around 200 bucks this year. When it's all said and done, they also do like six packs. So if you're interested, just go to TellYourRideHorrorShow.com. This is not a sponsored segment from them. I'm just a fan. So, tell you right, horror show. Woo woo. So, because I don't have anything really else to talk about, um, something that did come up uh, several times this week, actually, um, to kind of decompress a lot uh, after a work day or whatever. I will, I mentioned it before, I've, over the last year, uh, I started playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered a lot um, on Xbox, and when I'm home, uh, it's kind of a nightly thing, not counting, you know, if I go to the girlfriend's house or whatever, um, but even, you know, if I'm home and I'm not crazy exhausted from work because work has been stressful lately or if I'm not at the girlfriend's house or whatever. Uh, you know, I'll get online for a little while and play if uh, some of the other people I've grown accustomed to playing with over the last year are on. And we have a good time just talking shit to each other. And I'm not, I'm not a great player by any stretch of the imagination. Like, I, more often than not, I fucking suck. My kill-death ratio is terrible, but... I do enjoy playing and occasionally I have really good games and it's fun and like I said, you know, I talk a lot of shit and not even shit about the game, just random fucking shit. I, uh, my ability to talk is probably one of the few things that I personally think I have going for me. Um, hence this motherfucking podcast, which I didn't decide to do because I wanted to do it. I decided to do it because a lot of people thought I should and I said, oh, yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. And uh, I'm susceptible to peer pressure, maybe. Um, but anyway, this has come up before this, but it came up actually two separate nights this last week, just this last weekend even. Um, I don't remember if it was last night or the night before. I think it was last night, early last night. Um, was playing Xbox, and a guy was like, a guy who I played with quite a while, 
or, you know, for quite a while, I guess, because words are hard. I said, my ability to talk, <laughs> and I can't fucking speak. Um, he, my gamer tag on Xbox is Angel of Death, and he goes, uh, he's like, Angel, you, you know who you remind me of? And he, he's from Boston originally. He's got a really, really, really thick, wicked Boston accent, and I cannot... I cannot safely pretend to emulate a Boston accent outside of eliminating um, a hard R from my speech, you know, if I talk about the cause, but I can't, I don't feel comfortable doing that. I just fucking hate trying to mock a Boston accent um, or mimic, not mock, maybe mock. But anyway, he's like, you know who you remind me of? And I said, I I really don't know. Maybe the stepdad who... Uh, maybe held you a little too long, something like that. And he said, no. He goes, did you ever see the movie Flight with Denzel Washington? And I knew exactly where he was going with this. And I said, yeah. Did I remind you of the flight attendant from the beginning of the movie? Which, if you haven't seen Flight, it's a fantastic movie. However, I fucking hated the very ending of it. It was predictable, and it wasn't a bad ending. I just didn't, I just didn't like that ending. Um, outside of that, I loved the movie. I thought it was a fantastic movie. Very, very intense. The first mm, half hour of it or so. And, uh, it was, it was, it was really good. Really, really like it. I like Denzel. So, but John Goodman in that movie is fantastic. And he goes, you remind me, he goes, you ever seen flight? I said, fuck yeah, I've seen flight. It's a fucking great movie. And he goes, John Goodman in that movie I was like, oh, you would not be the first person to tell me this. The, um, literally the night before. So I don't remember if it was last night or the night before that. Um, so maybe two nights before now. Uh, somebody else had said the exact same thing to me. Not even a person I play with regularly. They just It was just another random person playing the game with us. Her, her, hearing me talk shit in the group of people, but we play in the regular game chat. So anybody who's listening can hear what we're saying. Um, and if they want to participate with us, they can, but they said the exact same thing. And then he said this too. And I said, holy fuck, what is it with you people? Um, and then when it first came out, one of the dispatchers I used to work with, she's a big, big, big Denzel fan, big Denzel fan, loves Denzel. Um, like I would fear for Denzel's safety in her presence if... If that ever happened, like I would, his security would need to be on alert probably because she is a little Denzel obsessed and I don't blame her. Denzel's awesome. But uh, she saw it before I ever did. And she goes, James, did you, ever, did you go see Flight yet? And I said, no, I did not. She goes, you need to go see Flight and you need to let me know about John Goodman. And I said, what about John Goodman? She goes, his character reminds me so much of you. And I said, Interesting. So when I did see it, I was like, well, I don't know how to take this because he plays a drug dealer, which, you know, I'm not opposed to being, you know, uh, being something or being someone who reminds other people of a drug dealer or being someone who is reminded by drug dealers. I don't know how to say it, but um, I don't mind that. Uh, but if you haven't seen Flight, you got to see Flight. And then you need to let me know what you think. If you know me personally, um, let me know what you think about the John Goodman character in that movie. Because I fucking loved him. I thought he was fantastic. I think that's one of his best characters ever. I've always loved John Goodman uh, since Roseanne. Back when I was a kid, Roseanne, my mom loved Roseanne. Watching Roseanne was awesome. John Goodman has always been awesome in my eyes. Um, between that and his character in... Uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane, and Arachnophobia. Probably some of his best works. Three of his best works. Um, oh, fuck. Can't forget. Can't forget get the Big Lebowski. Um, fantastic in that. So, But yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen Flight, see Flight. Watch Flight. Get back to me on the John Goodman. So, he's amazing. And... That's my uh, that's my tangent about John Goodman, and I like I said I don't have shit to talk about in this episode, so I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, heads up at the end of the month for Memorial Day weekend, I'll probably have an episode out. I'm going out of town for a friend's wedding. I'm going up to uh, Keystone for the weekend, 
And since I usually record on the weekends and then put it out Monday, I may or may not get an episode out in time, but I'll try to get it at least recorded and I'll try to get one out before then. So, But if I don't, just know that uh, I meant to. It'll be in, out in spirit, but I'm sure I'll get it out because I'm not going up till uh, Friday afternoon or something. So, yep, and that's in a couple weeks, so we got some time. Maybe I'll even have something to talk about then so you don't waste uh, 20 minutes of your life. But I thank you for wasting it with me. And you know where to find me on the social media, Twitter, Instagram, Death Metal Disco Pod. Uh, Twitter is at Death Disco Pod, I think. I really should put up post-it notes or something with this information on there since I'm dumb. But I love you all. Thanks for listening. Uh, Hit me up if you have anything you'd like to hear me talk about. Or if you're interested in even being a guest on my show, I would happily interview really just about anybody. We can do a Zoom call. Um, Probably be easier than doing it in person just because then I don't have to lug hardware and shit to you. And I don't want you at my apartment probably, so... Yeah, that's that's my story. So I'm going to go to the bathroom now, and then I'm going to edit this. So I love you. I hope you guys have a really good week, and be safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I'll talk to you next time. <laughs>